All right. Um, kia ora koutou katoa, uh, ko James Taylor taku ingoa. Uh, hi everybody, my name is James Taylor and I'm the Online Collections Information and Partnership Manager at Tamaki Paengihira Auckland War Memorial Museum and this afternoon I'm going to talk to you about some work that we're doing uh, trying to uh, enhance Wikipedia so that it can be useful for uh, the new Aotearoa New Zealand history curriculum that's just been rolled out across uh, high school, uh, sorry, primary school, intermediates and secondary schools across, across New Zealand. Um, so just a little bit of background, um, so since 2015 Auckland Museum has opened up its, uh, its uh, online collections. Uh, we currently have about uh, a million records that are available to be viewed online and about 400,000 open access images. Uh, and we push, and we've pushed all that data and that collection imagery out across to about 20 different partners. Um, uh, all across the internet, and so I manage I manage that work. So we send uh, collection imagery out to places like Wikipedia, of course, uh, to GBIF, to the Biodiversity Heritage Library, uh, to Flickr. Um, used to do Twitter, but don't do that anymore, um, and various other aggregators and and data platforms. Um, two or three years ago, uh, the museum we've been engaged with with Wikipedia since that open openly licensed material uh, went online. But about two or three years ago, we decided that we want to get a little bit more um, strategic with the work that we do in the Wikipedia space. So we engaged a local Wikipedian, Mike Dickerson, to write a strategy for us. And we've used that as the basis for, um, use that as the basis for some of the work that we've done. And our, uh, we update our work, Wikipedia work plan annually, um, and we're looking to engage with the community. We're looking to enhance uh, data and information on Wikidata on, uh, and on Wikipedia and also uh, upload more content to Wikimedia Commons as well. Uh, and we also have a Glam Wiki project page that details the work that we do. Uh, so in terms of the Aotearoa New Zealand Histories curriculum, so this, is, this curriculum is really important in the New Zealand space because it's the first time uh, that history is actually a compulsory subject in New Zealand. Up until this year, it wasn't actually a compulsory study uh, it wasn't a compulsory uh, subject to be studied in schools. Uh, and what's interesting is that this, this sort of has this framework uh, that the Ministry of Education have set out. So there's this three stands, strands, uh, and that is then given to teachers to implement in the classroom. So we don't have a, we don't have this sort of codified curriculum in New Zealand. It's quite, it's sort of open to interpretation in terms of resources. So there's three main, three main stands, strands. One of them is uh, the understand, um, which is about the big ideas and the big concepts of New Zealand history. Uh, there is a, a no strand, which is uh, how this project relates uh, to, uh, to the work that we're doing. And that is about understanding the big ideas within local context. And then finally, there's the do, do strand, which is around thinking critically and engaging with sources and teaching those kids, uh, teaching those skills to, to kids. Um, as I mentioned, so the no part is what is critical. So within this framework, there's an expectation that schools uh, will be teaching uh, the students these critical thinking skills and these wider national topics within the local context. And this is an area uh, that since we've been working with schools in the Ministry of Education that we know that teachers are really struggling for local resources. As I said, we don't have compulsory textbooks and it's tricky because this is a social studies, um, part of the social studies curriculum actually rather than history curriculum. So the teachers teaching uh, New Zealand history won't necessarily be, uh, have a history specialisation either, let alone know about you know, such in-depth in details about, about uh, their local areas. Um, so we've we've been thinking about how, you know, how because, because we have already this active engagement with Wikipedia, we've been thinking for the last few years about how we can leverage Wikipedia as a resource for the new curriculum. Um, and what we started to think about was, can we kind of uh, leverage that no part of the curriculum, that local history and that local context part of the curriculum, uh, and kind of marry that with the work that we're doing with Wikipedia. So. One of, one, of the, one of the aims and one of the reasons for doing that is that we can uh, make the, our open access and other institutions open access GLAM resources um, accessible to teachers and to students at scale on somebody else's platform that we don't necessarily have to maintain, but that can also then be contributed to by the wider, wider Wikipedia community. Um, we also 
uh, want to grow the education audience using Wikipedia. We know, well, we, we guessed that teachers were using Wikipedia, and that's, a, that's the next part that I'll talk about, but, um, you know, help to, help to legitimise Wikipedia as, a, as, an, as an education resource. Um, and then over the longer term, if we've got more um, kids using Wikipedia in class and teachers encouraging them to use Wikipedia in the class, then we can potentially grow the local New Zealand editor base as well. Um, so, I mean, we, we, before we started this project, we knew that Wikipedia was being used in, we, we had an idea that Wikipedia was being used in classrooms. As you can see from this, um, this image here, uh, which was from a study done by uh, NetSafe for New Zealand in 2019. Uh, you know, you have uh, around children's use of, of the internet, you have the typical suspects like YouTube, the Googles, um, Facebook and whatnot, but then Wikipedia comes in um, pretty high on the list. So obviously children are using it, but we had heard anecdotally that teachers were discouraging the use of Wikipedia. So before we jumped in with a kind of bigger project around the curriculum, we wanted to actually make sure that uh, that it would be a good use of resource and good use of our time and, the Wikipedia, and find out basically whether or not Wikipedia was being used in the classroom in New Zealand and see if we could kind of um, answer some of those questions around uh, some, of the, some of the anecdotal evidence that we knew about. Um, so the research project aims, uh, so we applied for Wikimedia Foundation research funding. Uh, in 2021, um, and the, the research project aims were around understanding the use of Wikipedia um, in New Zealand classrooms. We wanted to um, understa uh, understand whether New Zealand school teachers would um, use editing and uh, creating Wikipedia articles as a way of kind of applied learning of historical knowledge. So could some of the historical thinking and critical thinking skills that were being taught in classrooms as part of uh, this new curriculum, could they be applied to the creation of Wikipedia articles? Um, we wanted to understand whether New Zealand school teachers would be interested in programs around um, secondary kids editing um, uh, local history pages, um, and then we also, part of the project was also around uh, literature review around the use of, of Wikipedia in secondary classrooms. Uh, as you're probably aware, there's quite a lot of academic studies of the use of Wikipedia in uh, the tertiary space, but n when we did our initial um, initial literature reviews, there wasn't as much uh, wasn't as much research into secondary classrooms, and certainly not in the New Zealand context. Uh, so we re rec recruited a researcher from Victoria University of Wellington, Mark Sheehan, to come on board. Uh, we sent out a survey to teachers across New Zealand and also did uh, some much more focused interviews with some of the thought leaders uh, the, uh, amongst the Auckland uh, secondary school teaching profession. Uh, as you can see there, uh, we had pretty good response to the survey uh, across, across New Zealand and across the different types of schools in New Zealand. Uh, and we also undertook seven, seven more in, in detailed uh, re, uh, interviews. So in terms, of the, uh, the, in terms of the survey responses, this was what we thought that we were going to get, and this is what we'd been told that we were going to get, a kind of negative uh, reception to Wikipedia. But actually, the data that we got back was much different to this, and it was actually really heartening for the work that we wanted to do. So um, uh, the survey results are here, and there's also, it's not very clear, but there's a link to uh, uh, Google data, uh, Google Looker Studio, that I've compiled all of the results from the survey. Um, but the first question asked around whether teachers, you know, access information for themselves, over 90% of them did, of course. Uh, but then we also asked them when was the last time that teachers uh, accessed Wikipedia for teaching. And as you can see, a huge, uh, there's something like, was it 13 percent or 14 percent had used it on the day of doing the survey and then a large percentage had used it within three months so we we could kind of understand that teachers were using Wikipedia to prepare for their for their classes um, and then the next question and really the crucial question was around whether or not teachers allowed students to use Wikipedia to access information and as you can see this was a really surprising result and that between yes sometimes and yes often there's a like very, very high percentage of the shoot of the teachers are allowing the use of Wikipedia in New Zealand classrooms now. So that perception of Wikipedia has changed quite dramatically, whether or not that shifted over, co uh, over COVID and the increasing impact of misinformation, it's kind of difficult to know. But uh, it's 
we've got pretty solid evidence that Wikipedia is, is used in New Zealand classrooms and, and it's a legitimate resource. Um, we asked the question about whether or not Wikipedia could, use, could be used by teachers for thinking critically about the past. Again, generally positive um, research uh, answer, to, answer to that question. Um, and then this is a response from one of the teachers. So we had free text fields and, uh, where teachers could put comments in. And this is just one of the responses where a teacher talks about, um, you know, it provides an overview of topics, uh, it has useful links, uh, there's references at the bottom that can be verified um, and also really crucially I think from a teaching perspective the students can go and look at the talk and the edit pages and actually see how the pages have changed and actually kind of understand the construction of knowledge. So then the, the final piece was just around local historical resources and it became apparent to us that the local knowledge on Wikipedia wasn't as useful for teachers as the national resources for so this was the gap basically in the in, the, um, uh, in Wikipedia as a resource. So here's some of the findings. Um, I won't go through all of those because I'm getting a bit short on time. But basically it really encouraged us to go ahead with the work that we're doing in Wikipedia. Wikipedia was being used in the classroom, uh, but there were some opportunities for us. So uh, last year we applied for further funding from the Wikimedia Foundation Alliance Fund, where uh, we wanted to basically enhance Auckland suburb pages to provide resources for teachers. So if a teacher was teaching about their local history in the area where the school was or where their kids where their kids are from, they could go to a suburb page and get a rich, rich historical narrative um, and, and we, we would enhance that and edit it. We're also, um, we've also asked for some money for some students to come in at the end of this year. If there'll be a cohort of four students doing some editing where well, they'll be able to do a bit more work uh, based on their cultural background and the places that, that, uh, that they're from as well. So there's four, four main project, well there's actually five main project phases for the work that we're doing. So we're enhancing the um, Auckland suburb pages, we are um, uh, offering some training and professional development to other GLAMs if they want to do this sort of work because this, these sort of resources are in desperate need across the country. Uh, I've mentioned the summer students that will be coming in and then also crucially we're going to be working with teacher advisors as well to ensure that the content that we're creating is useful for, um, for their use in the classroom. So this is an example of the sort of editing uh, that uh, Marty Blaney, who's a Wiki, Wikipedian in residence at the Auckland Museum, has been doing. Uh, and this is a sort of template that we're using. So this is an example of one of the first pages that he, one of the first pages that he edited. So this is Mangare Bridge, uh, just before he started work on it, and I could fit the whole screenshot of it onto this slide. Um, and then this is what he's done since. So th this is what the current page looks like, and obviously couldn't fit the whole thing into, into the slideshow. So the features and, and what we're doing, the work that we're doing is, uh, really enriching the Wikipedia pages with a rich historical narrative. In the past, a lot of the suburb pages would be what you'd imagine they were, that there was a white man that brought some land, there was a railway station built, there were some schools built, and you know that's not particularly useful. But what we've done, drawing on secondary resources, is uh, adding Māori history to the pages, so uh, that's indigenous uh, people of New Zealand. We're adding sections about colonisation and land confiscation, the process of uh, of, of how land was acquired by Pākehā, by European, um, and also looking at post-war developments as well. Then what we're doing to supplement that is, and to, to, uh, to further enrich these pages is adding um, uh, open image, uh, openly licensed images from different glam, glam institutions. So you see historical maps, black and white photos, that sort of thing. Um, and then obviously also we've got really detailed references uh, on the page um, and also links out to other relevant digitised content from different GLAM organisations. So hopefully, you know, it's a, it's a great starting point for teachers to learn a little bit more as they start to prepare for their studies. So in terms of the, the work that we've done, so we started uh, in February this year and Marty, uh, who can't be here unfortunately, has done an awesome job. Uh, create you know, a huge amount of editing, over 300,000 words added um, and, and uh, nearly 1,400 images added to the pages. Um, and what it means is that now we've also been doing regional pages as well as suburb pages, but it means that um, 
we have covered off is that 73 per cent of the uh, regions where students live and are just under 60 per cent of just over 60 per cent of the areas where students uh, where students live as well um, but we have um, encountered some difficulties so obviously this uh, post-war uh, area has been has been difficult because of a lack of secondary material. Auckland is an incredibly multicultural country, significantly more multicultural, significantly more multicultural city than the rest of New Zealand, and we've had some difficulties telling those stories because again that those sources aren't there and those secondary material aren't there. Uh, Māori history has been problematic for us as well, again because of a lack of um, secondary sources and also because some forms of Māori traditional knowledge don't fit in within the Western worldview. So for example, oral histories can't be included. Um, so what we've had to do is use some of the official accounts from Treaty of Waitangi reports, which kind of include a lot of historical reference to tell that story a little bit more, but there's a bunch of work, a bunch more work that we could do in that space. Um, and because of these issues, what it does mean is that there has been a bias towards the wealthier um, and predominantly Pākehā areas because that's where there has been information written. But what we're hoping is with the summer students potentially we could come in and fill some of those gaps. Um, we've also been running meetups with the local community and, and we've had some struggles with that as well over time. Uh, so in terms of what's next for our project, well this will be running through till February next year. Uh, we've got some plans for a couple of uh, GLAM professional development workshops where we'll share how this sort of work can be done by other institutions. We'll be running that online and in person. Uh, the summer students, as I've mentioned, will be coming into the museum and joining our wider summer studentship cohort. Uh, we'll be meeting with teachers and um, just checking in with them that the work that they're doing is, is, is relevant and useful for them in the classroom. Uh, at the end of the project, we'll have some learning and evaluation uh, and that we'll, we'll be sharing the methodology and the, our learnings uh, with the GLAM institutions. And we'll also be presenting this work at uh, the New Zealand Historical Association later in the year. Um, and longer term, what we're hoping is that we can maintain and continue to do this work uh, so that we can ensure that Wikipedia uh, is and remains a trusted resource uh, for the use uh, of local history teaching in, in classrooms in New Zealand, and also by doing that, hopefully, to grow the uh, local editor base as well. And there's two minutes for questions, if, you've, if anyone's got anything. Actually, sorry, before that, um, a big thank you, first of all, to the Wikimedia Foundation Alliance Fund that is paying for the work that we're doing here. Big shout out to some of the um, foundation staff that have helped us along the way, particularly Jacqueline Chen, uh, and also Melissa from the education team. Massive thank you to the Aotearoa New Zealand user group has been incredibly supportive of the work that we've done in this space. Um, and also just want to say big thanks to, to Mark who did the initial research project and also to Marty who's actually the one going in and grinding away at all, all the editing work. Um, happy to have a chat or discuss the work that we're doing here. I think it's potentially applicable in other contexts. So there's my username uh, and there's my email address as well. And now we're down to two, right on two minutes for questions. So thank you. Yes. Uh, thanks very much. Thanks very much. Really interesting. Before you did your survey, you were told that Wikipedia would or, or Wiki, Wikis would not be very well received by teachers. Yep. What were the reasons for that? Um, I think it's you know that's that sort of this that story that we've heard in the past about the fact that anybody can go in and edit Wikipedia. It's not written by experts. How can you trust it if that's the case? It's not a published book. So I think some of those those sort of um, typical stereotypes that Wikipedia has received in the past, you know, was kind of compounding that. I think that there's a generation potentially of older teachers that have that mindset, but I think that the profession's getting younger and more tech savvy and, you know, Wikipedia is more normalised, um, you know, to use a term amongst younger teachers as well. So it may also be a generational thing, if I'm honest. So, yeah. But as I say, it was sort of, that was anecdotal and that was sort of offhand comments and offhand remarks and that sort of thing. I, I know you said there were challenges rela relating to some of the suburbs, but I think it's quite impressive that you were able to get such detail at such a local scale. So I'm wondering if you have any general 
sort of learning advice for how to build an effective Wikipedia article on uh, such the scale where there's often very few sources? Yeah, um, so obviously we have to rely on secondary references and that does mean digging into some of the work that like local historical societies have done. Um, and I think part of that is treating some of that material that's published by the smaller societies with a bit more care. Uh, one of the reasons that we're uh, lucky, one of the reasons we could do it at the museum is we have a large uh, reference library with a lot of heritage material, so we could also draw on that. So there's a sort of source of information, not just online, but the published resources that we could do. Um, and, you know, again, a shout out to Marty. He's a math, really experienced Wikipedia editor and um, he has the ability to just distill, you know, this information to create a construct, a coherent narrative and that sort of thing as well. So, yeah, so it's about, um, it's about being in a place that has the material being kind of picky with that material, not not necessarily using all of it, but also then just the individual skill um, of, of of our Wikipedia to be able to synthesise and to kind of condense that information into to readable content as well. Thanks. Mm, you said that there are fewer sources after World War Two. Yeah. Uh, have you considered recording? to the elder people and upload their, what they have to say to commons, like audios or videos? Um, so, I mean, in terms of uh, some of that content, some of that content is culturally sensitive, so it can't necessarily be openly licensed, and so it can't go up to commons in that form. Um, and it's something that I think the New Zealand movement needs to start thinking about, you know, in the in the longer term. Um, but also, you know, say with with the multicultural of New Zealand, multiculturalism of Auckland, I should say, uh, there just hasn't a lot of that migration occurred post World War Two, and there hasn't been a lot of uh, work done in that area. So yeah, it's just a, a, a there's a lack of researchers and ac academics doing that work. But as I say, if we can bring in some summer student. Uh, the, the summer scholars, they may be able to fill some of those gaps uh, for us as well in terms of uh, being able to uh, let us know about resources that we're not aware of, for instance, and also thinking about how can we publish some knowledge onto, say, museum blogs and topic pages so that we can bring those into Wikipedia articles too. So, yeah, so we're kind of chipping away a little bit at that, but certainly, yeah, the, the post-war period, is a lot, it's a lot lighter for the work that we're doing. Cool. All right. Thank you.